I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, man, this is my schedule these days. All I <laughs> all I do is go on podcasts and videos and talk about this bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I appreciate you everything. Uh, I share your videos with my students. I first came across you about 10 years ago when I first started teaching personal trainers in Dublin and I came across Rob Wolf and I loved him because he's a fellow Chico guy like myself. And so I'd use a lot of his material for my classes. I teach trainers and now I've expanded down into LA and San Diego. And we were, I was having a Zoom talk today with my class and we were even talking about like supplements and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, well, I only believe in one supplement and it has to do with sleep. And I just talk so highly of everything that you've done. And especially with these videos you're putting out right now, they're awesome. I mean, everyone in their their moms and the uh, expert today on vi virology and all this stuff. And they're telling you all right. this kind of shit. And so it's, it's really just, it's a breath of fresh air to have quality information that you're putting out there. So I send that to my students and, and family members. So everything you're doing is really, really appreciative. So I just wanted to chat with you a few minutes today about everything that you're doing and, you know, get a little deeper into the sleep stuff and just and share it out to my followers because, you know, there's a lot of trainers out there that could use this valuable information. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I mean, that, that sounds like uh, you're my Johnny Appleseed, so I appreciate your effort too. <laughs> I've been giving out your stuff all the time. I call it your sleeping potion because it's – yeah. It's, it's amazing. And I literally, like, I screwed up on my, because I moved back up here north of LA for the time being, and I totally forgot to renew my subscription. So I was freaking out. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go on there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm a meth guy or something because I don't have it. Yeah. Was, well, it's crazy. Like, if, you, if you've gone, you, I, I would say on average, before I started taking your supplement, maybe, maybe once a year I'd sleep through the whole night. And so oh, now, wow. like two, three times a week, which still doesn't sound that much, but that's significant. And it's like sounds. Yeah, Whereas before, I would take like just your, your simple melatonin and it would just black me out and have crazy dreams or dragons are trying to kill me and shit. And, and your stuff yeah. is just very soothing. And so let's talk. Can we talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the magical things that you put in there that you can discuss openly and then how that helps with the average person in sleep? And then we'll just kind of go from there a little bit. All right, man. We're we're already going. We're already recording. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. I mean the the I mean the whole the genesis of that product kind of explains the product really well. So you know when I, when I got back to the SEAL teams as the physician, um, yeah, you know, the guys were having a lot of what I would call performance issues, um, which you know usually weren't observed by anyone other than themselves, but they just weren't doing as well as they felt like they should do. Um, and you know, that was everything, everything associated with, uh, with performing. So it's, you know, it's their mood and their motivation, but also their strength and speed and fitness and body comp and like everything was involved. Um, and when I decided that I, uh, you know, it took me a while, but when I decided that I thought sleep was a major contributing factor, cause I was testing everything on them. Right. Not, I mean, I was doing every kind of serum test I could possibly do because I didn't know what the hell I was looking for. So just hoping it would jump out at me. Um, and it didn't. But, uh, you know, when, when I decided that the most likely cause of all, you know, you know, if, if you go by Occam's Razor's principles, right? So it's like, uh, you know, the, the one that makes the fewest assumptions is likely to be right. And the only assumption that I was making was that people would do better without sleep drugs. Um, and that, like, that was my assumption. So that turned out to be right. Uh, no big surprise now, but you know, in 2009, nobody thought there was anything wrong with sleep drugs, man. Like sleep drugs were totally fine. They were totally safe. Uh, and so anyway, I couldn't just take away their sleep drugs. They were using sleep drugs because they couldn't sleep. So I couldn't just say, suck it up, right? But mm -hmm. so one of the things they had tested though was vitamin D3. And almost everybody was vitamin D3 deficient no shocker that was kind of like the beginning of the awareness around that it's when they had you know the vitamin d3 calculator online and all that stuff and um and so i thought well you know my guys my guys tend to work at night and sleep during the day and and you know and go out and the, you know when they do go out in the day they're you know they're covered up in a lot of equipment and gear and stuff so test their vitamin d3 are they deficient yes they're all deficient there you go. I solved it. I'm the smartest guy ever. Like, <laughs> cha-ching, yeah. right? Uh, um, of course, that didn't solve it. Uh, but, you know, it made a difference for some people. And so um, I said, all right, well, 
uh, you know, let's, let's look into this more. And of course, magnesium is a cofactor for all vitamin D3 reactions. So, all right, let's add some magnesium. So we added natural calm. Um, and I think, what were the, what were the drops uh, that you screwed off the lid that was uh, for the vitamin D3? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, oh. Every, everybody used the same one. Yeah, yeah it was exactly Carlson. Carlson's right. It's like it's the same as the sleep, the same as the fish oil, like Carlson's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I started with everybody doing Carlson's drops and then I added natural calm. Um, and then I said, well, maybe we should add some melatonin. Melatonin was really tricky though, man. Like, like you talk about like some people that really, it was really hard on them. Like they didn't, they didn't like the way they slept. Uh, they didn't like the way it made them feel. They felt bad the next day. So uh, I was friends with Dan Party. I, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Super Oof. smart dude, uh, neuroscience PhD, learning, you know, especially in sleep. Talked to him a lot. Uh, he educated me on how little <laughs> melatonin your brain actually needs and how little it makes. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm like overdosing by orders of magnitude here. <laughs> so uh, let's, like, let's take that down. Um, and then, you know, somewhere along the lines, I don't, I don't remember exactly how every ingredient got added, but I was just like, well, let's support the production of melatonin. Let's not give, like, that's, that's kind of what it was. So I, I said, uh, cause I don't want to give you more melatonin than you need, right? If I give you more melatonin than you need, then I downregulate your melatonin receptors. And now even if you have normal melatonin production, you're deficient because you don't have as many receptors for it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I want to be really careful not to overdose. So I want to underdose. So what can I do if I know I might be underdosing? Well, I'm going to make sure all the substrate is there for you to be able to produce your own melatonin, which comes you know, through the pathway, right? So tryptophan 5-HTP with the help of magnesium and vitamin D3, then 5-HTP can become serotonin. Serotonin can then become melatonin and of course if you're deficient in your pathways you can actually outstrip your serotonin production because you need so much melatonin and that's probably you know there's some mechanism in there is how depression is you know depression is associated with sleep deprivation and vice versa so uh you know i was also i also had people uh doing high dose fish oils just because i wanted to decrease any sort of inflammatory cascades that might be going along with that um and then a little while later, we learned about uh, basically L3 innate and L3 anine both in, enhance the efficacy of GABA. Uh, I started putting GABA in there because I knew GABA slowed down the neocortex and part of going to sleep, as I learned, you know, because I educated myself on all this, and part of going to sleep was slowing down the neocortex. Because the real definition of being asleep is that you're no longer interacting with your environment. There's a barrier between you and your environment. That's really all sleep is. And there's predictable neuronal pathways going on during that phase. So you can, and you can be awakened through it. That's kind of the definition of sleep. So if you, you know, you know, like we all know, if you pay, if you're, if your environment is stimulating enough, especially like if your environment's really dangerous, right? If you're, if you, if you're being pursued and preyed upon and you're Shut a human up. or any other animal, um, or if there's a lot of members of the opposite sex or like what you're attracted to and loud music and like you can override uh, all the sleep producing activities of your brain because you're paying so much attention to your environment. So you have to, you know, you have to slow down your brain. And that's really what happens evolutionarily, right? Once, once the sun goes down, not only do we decrease the blue light in our eyes, we decrease our activities. Because there weren't flashlights and there weren't lights and, you know, we're, we can't see well at night. And so, like, you know, everything settled down and the temperature went down. Like, and, like, things happened in the environment that changed our bodies and we've kind of gotten away from that. So I added the GABA to slow down the neocortex and L-theanine to decrease uh, or to increase the GABA efficacy. And then uh, just uh, at the very end of that, so this is – when, when it was like this, like all the seals were going out and buying each individual ingredient. <laughs> uh, and they were going to three or four different stores to get everything. Um, and at, right at the very end, uh, the, some research came out. I think it was done in the CrossFit committee about um, phosphatidylserine decreasing uh, exercise-induced cortisol during head training. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, shit. If it decreases cortisol for that, it probably decreases cortisol in general. So let's do that. 
Um, and so that's why, you know, that's why we added the uh, phosphatidylserine in there, decrease the cortisol levels, decrease the stress hormones. So it's literally the best cocktail out there. Like you said, it's just, it has everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the beauty was that I had, because I was working with such a motivated group of people, um, and they obviously trusted me enough to tell me, you know, what was going on with them and, um, and to react well when they, when they fed back to me. So, and these guys were keeping great sleep logs and journals and, you know, some guys, a few guys had like Fitbits and stuff at that point, but those, you know, sleep trackers weren't really common then. Um, but like, we just got to adjust the dosage kind of weekly, like on the fly, we just kind of oh. figured it out. Um, and then we found out, well, you know, a lot more of this, a little, a lot less of this, you know, a little, and we fine tuned it all. And, uh, and then they just hounded me for a couple of years to make it into a product because it was such a pain in the ass for them to have to go buy it all individually. And yeah, they had the drops and they had their powders to mix and they had their capsules and the, you know, it was just, it was a huge pain. They couldn't really travel with it because it's mm -hmm. like a big bundle yeah. of crap. <laughs> and so they just kept hounding me to make a product out of it. And I said, all right, I will. Uh, That's great. Yeah. And I wanted it to be liquid so that it absorbs really quickly. Um, and also to try to incentivize people to make a nighttime routine out of it, which is why I said make it with hot water or warm water and like mm -hmm. kind of make it you know, create some sort of ritual and, you know, a little bit of sleep preparation. And, you know, so that, I mean, that's really the whole reason the product exists and why everything's in it that's in it. Um, and if anything else comes up that seems really smart to add, I'll add that too, you know. <laughs> it like, seems like it's perfect right now. And yeah. It must be one of the – is it kind of a hard thing to, to talk about in the sense it's, it's kind of like fitness in a sense, but it's, sleep isn't sexy. I mean, it's, it's hard oh, yeah. to sell on that. And people, you got people saying, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And it's like, it's overrated. Oh, it's, you know, Steve Jobs sleeping four hours. It's like, I'm going to get more out of my day by waking up early. And people don't realize how important sleep is. Yeah. And, and the harder thing about sleep is, one, I, mean, I think it's I think it's getting easier to convince people because there's more information. Like when I started this, uh, you know, over ten years ago, nobody was talking about sleep. I, I mean, I literally got laughed at for saying that sleep would affect your hormones. Like that was the dumbest thing they would ever heard of in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, no, really, your testosterone will be higher if you sleep. Oh God, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Huh? Um, but you know, there's no there's not a very good subjective sense of sleep, right? If you're sleeping well, you don't really know you, you really don't know anything. Right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You went, basically you lost awareness and then your awareness came back. So by definition, you have no awareness of when you weren't aware. Um, and it's not like fitness where it's like fitness. I can get on a scale and fitness. I can look at the mirror and I can say, Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. I can measure my waist and go, my waist has gotten a little better, a little smaller and my abs are a little more defined. Like I think I'm getting faster. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting better. I can lift more weight and I can run faster. Like there's metrics. Uh, and if somebody is training consistently with goals and measuring then it's a lot easier to add sleep because then I can prove to them that sleep is affecting their metrics. Yeah. But if you just take the Joe Blow who's not really tracking anything and I say, hey, sleep's the most important thing. Well, how do I convince them that sleep's mattering a lot, right? Because unless they're measuring something, you have to, because, you know, if, if you were, uh, if you're measuring cognitive performance, sleep would improve it, right? If you're, uh, emotional stability, sleep would improve it. You know, physical strength, physical endurance. Oh yeah, big time. Sex drive, like any, if you're measuring anything, you could prove to them, hey, you don't sleep well and you've been measuring this for six months, mm -hmm. start sleeping better and see what happens. Magic, right? Uh, but like I said, uh, there's no subjective experience and most people aren't measuring anything with the idea that sleep is the intervention that they're measuring. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, it's a tough sell. It's not a super sexy thing. It yeah. should be, should be easy, easiest thing in the world to sell. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like, it feels good. You don't have to really learn anything. No special equipment needed. Like should be like selling sex. I mean, it's just like what this right. is just a natural physiologic function. Why? Like this is the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's like, like, like there's a lot of social resistance to it. The social resistance is overwhelming. I mean, people just, 
firmly believe that it's a waste of time. It's a luxury. Yeah. Um, and that's the first thing people give up. First thing, you know, when, when, when your hours get shorter, very first thing to give up. Mm -hmm. And it's the last thing you should be giving up. That should be the number one priority. I mean, we created something called yeah. the body mass equation. And those are two of the main things we talk about sleep and stress. And people don't realize that if you're not sleeping, everything else is getting jacked up. And I love your, your right. TED talk when you talk about the example of the doctor, you know, at the bedside, it's like taking two shots right before he's doing surgery. It's like no one in their right mind, like get the hell away from me. That's, that's six right. and a half hours. And that's crazy. Cause that's, there's a lot of people getting three to four. I've had clients that will get two to three. And I'm just like, holy shit. I can only imagine what two to three is like. Yeah. Well, the average American is only sleeping 6.2 now. It's down from 6.5 when I started all this. It's gone down to 6.2. Um, and then in certain populations, by and large, the working population, it's down below six. It's like yeah. 5.8, 5.9. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, you know, you, you can believe whatever you want. Uh, you can act however you want. I'm not here to, you know, shake my finger at people and tell them what to do. but uh, you know, we know that, you know, there, there's a, there's a, an unsigned contract that we're all born into, right? Like we're all born into the limitations of this body. Um, and the limitations of, you know, one of the limitations of this body is that everything that's damaged in this body needs to be repaired and restored before you'll have that resource again. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and every, like every piece of life on this planet has, has that same contract. And our contract, unfortunately is just that it's eight hours to repair. Like that's how long it takes. And there's nothing you can do to change that. You, I mean, you can do all the biohacking you want, take every supplement you want, put butter in your coffee, put butter up your ass. I don't care what you do with it. Like, you're not, you can't get away from that. I mean, there's zero evidence anywhere in any medical literature in any country on the planet that people are optimal with less than roughly eight hours of sleep per night. Like that's what it takes. Um, you know, the argument would be like for, for you, like, it, like it would be like people telling you, I don't need to exercise nearly as much as you're telling me to exercise right or nutritionist like i don't need to eat nearly as much as you're telling me to eat like well it's kind of hard to argue <laughs> it's like pretty hard to make progress when somebody's just arguing the the general concept that it doesn't take as long as you think it does i think i'm going to get in really good shape by tomorrow afternoon i don't yeah. care what you say like <laughs> right and that's what people are saying to me essentially mm -hmm. right i know a guy I know a guy. Yeah. I know a guy that only sleeps four hours a night, and he's a oh, billionaire. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. And he's I only sexy. Need this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like no. <laughs> yeah, you believe it if you want to. Like, I'm, I, mm -hmm. I got, I'm not going to argue with you, but it's not true. I, I know it's not true. <laughs> I, I've been in this game a long time, and I guarantee you, if I could sleep six hours a night and be optimal, I would do it. I totally would do it. Yeah. If I could do four hours, I would definitely do it. But I need eight hours of sleep, and I know this to be true. Mm -hmm. And I want to be the best me I could be. I have to sleep eight hours. So yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a hard one to sell, especially because I would say it's one of the big things we talk to our clients about. And then you get the transfer over with alcohol. And so can oh, yeah. you talk to us a little bit about the effects of alcohol and how it, uh, whether if it delays or if it doesn't allow you to get in that deep sleep or what that blood alcohol content is? Because you know our clients will have a stressed out day. And they come home, the trainer tells them that you can't have carbs after seven o'clock because you die and go to hell. And so right. you know, they have a couple of pieces of chocolate. Next thing you know, they feel guilty. So then they have a bottle of wine. And, and or, or the other way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or the other way. They have a couple of drinks and then it's like, yeah, I can have some chocolate yeah, and a right? piece of cake and some chips. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that's my problem. When I drink, like I don't, I can't control my diet very well when I, and fortunately, I don't. I don't really have crappy food in my house, but mm -hmm. I'll still I'll still eat more food than I should be eating uh, with alcohol. So, yeah, so yeah, so I mean, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, when 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 we talk about sleep, the brain waves change, right? And uh, I, I like Matt Walker's metaphor of like it's like you're dropping a microphone down into the middle middle of a stadium, right? And you're like hanging from the ceiling. And like if somebody's doing the wave over there, like you can kind of tell that's going on over there. But by and large, it's just sort of like it's a just a cacophony. It's like white noise. Everything's mixed together. But then certain things can happen. And you can zoom in on that. Like you could fire a cannon or whatever, and you get that. Or you know, crowd goes crazy over here. 
Um, and that's kind of what the EEG is like. Like, so we measure all your brain waves and it's not like we can say, Oh, this is going from there to there and it's causing this. So we can just say like the pattern of the brain waves look like this. <laughs> and so when we combine how fast you're breathing, how fast your heart rate is, how much you're moving, what your blood pressure is like, what your pulse ox is like, uh, whether or not your eyelids are moving, and your brain waves, we put all that into kind of one formula. Like we add all of that into this model that we have. And then we create something called a hypnogram. The hypnogram, a lot of people have seen, it's like these little stepwise things that say, you know, you go from stage one sleep to stage two to stage three to stage four. You stay there for a certain period of time, and then you come back out the same way, right? And when you say stage one is like the pre-sleep, is when you get in bed, your environment's starting to not interest you as much, but you're still aware, right? Like you can still hear people talking in the room, generally paying attention to what they're saying, you know, you're not forming thoughts from it. You're just like, oh, you know, like I'm aware that that's going on. And then you get down to stage two where you're technically asleep and that's a transitional. You get, there's some special kind of firing nerve cells and uh, patterns in that that we won't get into that. And then you go into stage three which that's a, and these are progressively slower, right? Progressively slower brainwave states. So you get into three, it's theta, and then four is delta. And delta is the slowest wave. And then you stay there for a certain amount of time, and then you start coming back out. And then you go past stage one even. So you go from stage four, three, two, one, all the way to REM, which is above that. And REM's like a pretty active brain state, pretty fast waves. And then you go back down into another sleep cycle. And that whole cycle is between 90 to 120 minutes. Now, when you start off, when you first go to sleep at the beginning of the night, it's primarily deep sleep. So it's primarily stages three and four of sleep. So out of maybe a 120 minute sleep cycle, 20 minutes of that will be REM, right? And, you know, maybe out of the other 100 minutes, maybe another 60 of those would be deep. And like everything else is just kind of transitioning between those two. Um, well, the deep sleep is the most anabolic state. So I, I tell people that, like this all the time. If you think about fight or flight, fight or flight is a very recognizable state. It's essentially the maximum amount of stress hormones that your body can produce. And the maximum amount of stress response your body can produce. Like that's fight or flight to the point where it's impairing a lot of other things, but it's making you faster and stronger and more enduring and increasing your pain threshold and you know sharpening your reflexes and dilating your pupils and you're taking in more light, bigger field of vision. Your brain is essentially getting shut off because you're just paying attention to the one threat, right? There's the one threat that you have to fight or flee. <clears throat> and so you kind of become superhuman, but you're completely catabolic. 100% catabolic. You're using your body as a fuel to get to get out of this risk, yeah. like to get out of this threat. And so you don't want to run around like that all the time. It'd be great to be faster and stronger and have more dilated lungs. And you know, like, you know, it'd be great to have that all the time. That would be the new norm, but you're, you're getting rid of like all of your core, all your visceral blood flow and repair and functionality. You're not, you know, you're not re reproducing like uh uh, you're not dealing with anything to do with reproduction, right? Uh, your, uh, your sex hormones are lower, like uh, all of that stuff. Your digestion's lower and your immune system is essentially gone, right? Because it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter if you don't get away from the tiger, it doesn't matter if you can fight off the bacterial yeah. infection, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, and so you're not doing any repair, essentially. You're, you're using, you're breaking down big things and making them into fuel sources. So that's catabolic, right? Deep sleep is exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite. Deep sleep is almost no stress hormones. Your body's and limbs useless. Your heart rate's low. Your blood pressure's low. Your lung volume's low. You aren't moving. But guess what? All the exact opposite of what's happening in fight or flight is going on. So you're the most anabolic. Your immune system is at its highest. You're repairing everything. The, one of the first things you do is the structural cells that actually hold like the structure of the brain they contract by 30% and they create these little canals for, for your cerebral spinal fluid to flow through and to flush out toxins. One of the things you flush out is adenosine. Mm -hmm. 
break down ATP to adenosine. Adenosine makes you feel sleepy and tired. It slows your brain down. It causes the sleep pressure. You flush all that out during deep sleep. And you have the most anabolic period you have, like you have all night, is that first sleep cycle. That's the most anabolic period of your life. And then the next sleep cycle is a little shorter, a little less deep, and a little more REM. And then by the morning, your sleep cycles are primarily made up of REM and very little deep. And the REM, it has a lot to do with memory and emotions and uh, cognitive processing. A lot of that stuff, it happens more during the REM sleep. But as far as repairing your body, making yourself bigger, better, faster, stronger, better looking, all of that's happening during deep sleep. Now, when you use alcohol to sleep, you wipe out like 80% of your deep sleep and you lose about 20% of REM. And when you use sleep drugs, you lose about 20% of deep sleep and 80% of REM. So you use both, which most people who use sleep drugs do both. Mm -hmm. I'm not exaggerating in the slightest bit. I can't count the number of sleep studies that I've seen where it comes back that the patient was 99.9% .9 of their night was stage two sleep. It was all transitional sleep. So they didn't get the benefit of REM sleep or deep sleep. It was immeasurable, however much they're getting. And, you know, like I was saying about the surgeon, there's no self-awareness with yeah. that, right? Like there's no awareness while you're asleep. And when you're waking up, you're waking up in whatever state you're waking up in. And that's just perceived as normal because that's how you're waking up. This is what your waking hours are like. And then you don't repair again tonight. You don't restore again tonight. You wake up worse tomorrow, but that's just normal because that's what you're waking up as. It's not like waking up good and then crashing. You're waking up crap, right? Mm -hmm. And that just becomes your new normal. And you just go, this is life. I'm getting older. Like the seals used to say that to me. Like, yeah, like I'm crying during Hallmark commercials. Like I'm not, I'm not motivated. My body composition is shifting. I'm eating perfectly. I'm working with a like trainer. I'm doing everything. I'm getting slower and dumber and fatter and colder. I can't remember shit. I like a walk in a room. I can't remember why I came in there. Like I, it takes me 10 times. And they're like, maybe I'm just getting older. I'm like, yeah, I mean, hell, you're 34. I mean, is that, you're, it's oh, I mean, done like why are you even here anymore i mean of course it's all age uh yeah um because they just kept using alcohol and sleep aids every single night waking up worse every day mm -hmm. they were diminished every day of their life they were worse than the day before right i mean yeah. it's just and, it's and but that was just their, that was their norm that was mm -hmm. normal i mean is there any it's like you, you tell a client who's never worked out before and you tell them, you got to start working out five days a week. That's just way too much for them. That's just not realistic. So what if you have a client? Because one time I had a psychologist and she worked specifically with uh, prison inmates who just done the most vile things ever. And so she said when she would come home, she had to debrief by having two, three glasses of wine. It's like that's a, obviously a rare situation. Is there an optimal time where it's like if you're going to have a glass or two of wine have it at five so maybe your body's able to kind of clean some of it out before you do go to bed at 10 or is there any way to look at that positively not saying alcohol is good obviously but i'm just looking at the realistic scenario for all of our clients right well i mean it's, so it's a lot like fitness and i get i give this simile a lot um so when somebody comes to you and they don't have the slightest idea what they're doing they, they've never trained before they have essentially no fitness. I mean, there's, just, there's nothing about them that you would consider fit. They have to be pretty damn disciplined to get in shape. You know, if they had these goals of like, I want to be X, it, it's going to take a lot of discipline mm -hmm. um, and a lot of work and a lot of fine tuning. You're going to start with some big building blocks and then you're going to fine tune as they get closer to their goals. You're going to figure out what's working and what's not working. But it's pretty regimented, pretty disciplined, pretty hard. It actually sucks. And most people don't enjoy that first bit. But once you get in shape, it's pretty damn easy to keep it going, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I can loosely adhere to the stuff that got me in really good shape and I can stay in pretty good shape. And I'm with striking distance pretty easy. Like within a month, I can be in great shape again. Yeah. Right? yeah. <clears throat> um, well, sleep's the same way. So the best thing is to just be, you know, completely disciplined with it at the beginning the good news with sleep is it doesn't take six months of that right yeah like it's only a week it's like seven to ten days make sleep your number one priority for seven to ten days and then 
you can start tinkering with things that are suboptimal and see what you're willing to pay, right? Because there's, there's the ideal way of living and then there's reality, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's limitations. And, you know, this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing between the, like, I could, like, we can tell everybody the ideal of anything, but nobody's going to do the ideal. Mm-hmm. There's things, there's, there's limitations, there's, there's things that get in the way. So you do whatever you have to do to get as close to ideal and staying within reality. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's, that's the whole idea of it for me. So if I can get somebody to be an absolutist for a week, and it's really easy. First of all, you spend a lot of time convincing them how important it is. Mm-hmm. Even better, you get them to convince themselves how important it is. Like, you know, get your Google on and just start reading about all the negative impacts. Like, think, list off the top three things, the most important things in your, in, in your life to you, and then do that and sleep, right? Like strength and sleep, you know, cognitive function and sleep, or like whatever it is, like do this and sleep. Just Google it and read and read and read and read until you go, okay, I believe this is really important. Now I'm willing to take the challenge. So I tell people like this, if I said I will give you $10 million and you believe me, and you believe I have it. And you're like, all right, he's going to give me 10 minutes. I'll give you $10 million if you can sleep eight hours a night, every night for the next 30 days. How many people do you think could do it? Damn near everybody. Mm-hmm. Even multi-millionaires would be like, 10 mil- that's an easy 10 yeah. million. You know, let's do that. <laughs> um, so $10 million to do it, you don't need the $10 million, all right? If you can do it with $10 million, you don't need the $10 million. Like there's nothing about money that's inherently makes it easier to sleep. So convince people to try that it's really important, convince people to put a solid effort into it. And then I tell them this, all I want, so I'm not even asking you for 30 days. I'm asking you for seven days minimum, 10 days optimal, 10 days sleep's your number one priority. And all I want you to do is pay attention to your life and your function every day that you sleep really well and compare it to every day that you don't sleep really well. And at the end of that 10 days, if you think that sleep doesn't matter to you, go on about your life, right? Until you're broken next time and we'll try this again. Um, Because I can tell you, I've never had anyone say, I don't notice anything. (laughs) (laughs) No one's ever said that. (laughs) Now I have had people say, Oh, I feel way better. Like colors are brighter. I'm happier. I have a better relationship with my wife and my kids and I'm doing way better at work. I feel better in the gym, but you know, I don't don't have time to keep doing this. Like I've had that. Mm -hmm. I had that all the time. Um, That's a whole nother ball of wax, but everybody says they've, everybody's better. It doesn't matter what better is to you. Right. And that's a terrible sales pitch, but whatever it is that you value, it will make you better at that. Mm Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, I just wanted to, this is awesome. It's been really appreciative. I just wanted to pick your brain for a good 30 minutes. It's going to be so valuable for my students. And uh, I'll definitely put some links in here for your, your sleep stuff. It's sleep cocktails. Amazing. I can't, I, I mean, I'm your number one fan. So I mean, I, I give it to everyone. I've had people that, uh, that they'll literally like, trade me stuff for it. That's how much they love it. So <laughs> <laughs> are you yourself though? Are you, do you drink a little bit? Do you like wine or anything? Uh, I mean, I, I go through periods where I drink. I go through periods where I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of hit or miss. Um, it, it just seems like there's times where there's times where alcohol is more enjoyable, yeah. obviously. Uh, but there's also times where alcohol doesn't really seem to affect me as much. Because I get through periods in my life where it's like I have a couple of beers and I just sleep like crap and no, I feel no. bad. Uh, and then I go through other periods. It's like doesn't I don't I don't notice the difference now. If you want to convince anybody, all you got to do is track, just get them to track their sleep, uh, you know, with some sort of wearable. Like I wear a Garmin watch, mm-hmm. even when I'm not paying attention, and you know, just whatever life unfolds, and I have a few drinks, you know, one night, and I go to bed, and I wake up the next morning. Not only is my sleep worse, but I can see, I mean, like clockwork, as predictable as the sun coming up and down. My heart, my resting heart rate is ten to fifteen beats higher the entire night, man. The oh, entire wow. night, like. All right, well, that can't be good. Like I, like I have to, I have to admit that I, that's not exactly what I want. So then it just becomes, you know, what what's more important for you, right? Um, so 
yeah, I never finished that thought, but yeah, be super disciplined for the seven to 10 days. And then once you're convinced that this is really important for you, you can, you can start peeling off and go, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to see how I sleep the next seven days. If I just have two glasses of wine mm -hmm. and then you go, ah, uh, most people will be like, ah, oh, that seems a little too much. Like I'm going to go down to one glass of wine. And then most people end up like somewhere between I'll, I'll have a glass of wine, like two to three nights a week. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where most people end up. Uh, once they kind of get, you know, 40 plus uh, years old. Um, I think when you're younger, you're probably not going to matter. I mean, if you're 25, <laughs> unless you're just getting tanked, drunk every night, it's not. It's, if you're having, if you're having a couple of beers at 25 years old, you're probably not going to notice the difference in yourself. Yeah. You know, you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, the youth is I'm wasted asking, on the young, man. You know yeah. what I could do with the youth now? <laughs> man, I could <laughs> do so much. The reason I was asking because we have a, I was going to send you a bottle of wine to thank you for everything you're doing. I just didn't want to send it to you if you don't drink, but. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I, I drink. Oh, I great. Drink. Well, I'll, I'll send you a bottle of wine to, just to thank you for your time today. And again, thank you very much and look forward to uh, all the awesome stuff you're putting out there, sending out to all of our clients and hopefully we can get some, some more traffic over to you for your awesome product. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Are you an affiliate? You should be an affiliate if you're not. I was, but then uh, I was talking to Rachel. She said you guys flipped over, and I just I didn't sign back up. But okay. I, I got to get back in there. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Megan to hit you up. Let's get you back on. Great. Okay, All right, man. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, you too.